knowingly sponsor, conduct, or participate in the distribution or service of food to uh, groups of 25 or more within a two-mile radius of City Hall. And uh, very shortly after they passed that ordinance, uh, someone named Eric Montanez was arrested uh, for feeding the homeless. Uh, he went to trial, and he was uh, the, the uh, jury found him not guilty through jury nullification, which was awesome. So that really kind of sparked my interest. Um, it's been through legal battle a little bit, uh, but uh, when the uh, local court came back and, sa and said, yes, we can enforce this, that's when I, uh, myself and others, created the City Hall Sandwich Club, which um, basically we just went right in front of City Hall, where the epicenter of where that ordinance came from, and decided to you know, feed people that were hungry, we handed out a bunch of sandwiches, got uh, lots of press coverage. Yeah. Um, I was on uh, pretty much every local news station there, talking, you know, my main talking point was good people break bad laws. It was very well received. Um, and then uh, we, did, we actually did it again after that, and uh, right after we did it, uh, the, uh, another court came down and said that you, we cannot enforce this until we review the law. Um, and whether or not our efforts had anything to do with that, I don't know. But, so uh, just uh, about a month ago, uh, the court, this Appellate Court or whatever in Georgia came back and said, yes, the city of Orlando can enforce this. They agreed that what, they, what uh, Food Not Bombs was doing was a form of free speech. Uh, they agreed to that, but they said that it's, it's reasonable to limit free speech, which I didn't find reasonable at all. Um, luckily, uh, the group called Food Not Bombs, they, they picked it up and continued doing the food sharings at the, at the park where they had been doing them. And uh, recently there have been arrests. I believe the number is up to 24 arrests now, uh, 23 or 24 arrests, uh, people feeding the homeless. And uh, what, what I think is really unique about this is it's, it's not like a one-time thing. People are, people are coming up twice a week, um, going out there, sharing food, knowing they're going to be arrested, and, and that they're just doing it. And, and they're, they can't, they, they, they're hoping that they're going to kind of sweat, sweat us out and activists will stop coming. But uh, the, you know, the more people get arrested, the more attention this gets, and the more people want to go out there and show support and get arrested. So we're going to keep it going, and we're going to win this uh, food sharing battle in Orlando. Yeah, I can move here to the Shire, but uh, I see a, a bunch of your crew down here. So you guys are for campaign for liberty, and what well, kind of goes on in Orlando? Yeah, um, I. Uh, I, I kind of got into activism through Campaign for Liberty from there. I, I you know, joined the Republican Party and did some um, you know, inside the system activism. But um, I, last year I kind of decided that wasn't for me. I wasn't really for schmoozing and whatever. And um, Orlando's great. We got lots of great activists. Um, half the people in here are from Orlando. I guess the free statists don't care about anything that doesn't happen in uh, New Hampshire. So, <laughs> so um, anyway, so, uh, after, the, uh, after we did the disobedience at the uh, city hall with the food sharing, um, I, I, we decided to start doing cop watching, um, which has been very successful. I think our YouTube channel is like 90,000 views by now, which is awesome. Um, and uh, we've also been doing lots of jury outreach. Now, uh, Judge Belvin Perry, who's the chief judge of the 9th district there, um, uh, so we, we were so effective because in Orlando it's a lot different than uh, you know what I've heard about in different parts of New Hampshire. Every Monday through Thursday, 300 potential jurors come to the Orange County Courthouse, and there's jury trials virtually every day. And uh, so you know we we go through hundreds, probably three to five hundred uh, jury brochures every time we're out there, and we really put it. Uh, dent in the system. Prosecutors and judges would come up and yell at us and tell them that we're screwing with the process and all that, which, which is obviously my goal, so I thought that was great. Um, hell yeah. But, um, so uh, this judge decided that, you know, he wanted to ban jury outreach because he didn't want any, you know, he didn't want jurors to know their rights. He wanted to keep, uh, keep tearing going in the, in the uh, justice system. So, uh, so they, they, he had this administrative order that said you can't hand out jury information, you can't talk to jurors, you can't hold signs, you can't do anything to you know that might give any information to a potential juror, um, which we you know heartily broke. Uh, Julian Heichlin came down and uh, you know we, we did you know handed out jury information several times, and we you know the Orlando activists have done it several times since then, um, and, and they never uh, enforced that ordinance uh, or rather uh, order. Um, so then the judge made a new order 
after that saying that, oh, well, there can't be any free speech and any First Amendment activities will be banned from the Orange County Courthouse grounds. So, of course, you know, we, Julian Heichlin came back down and, and heartily nullified that and we, we followed. Uh, we were out there actually this Monday doing jury, jury outreach and, uh, you know, it was pretty awesome. So, uh, we're standing up down there. Uh, the, they're really doing everything they can to stop jury outreach in Orlando, but it's not going to stop. Um, it, it's, to me, I'd rather be in somewhere like Orlando where we can hand out 300 flyers every single day and, and really put a, a real dent in the system. Um, uh, to me, that's more exciting than, than doing it once a month uh, and handing out a couple dozen flyers. Uh, we're, we're really putting dents and we're really, you know, we're hearing stories about people who uh, are in there for victimless crimes and, and different things and, and are actually getting, getting retried and things like that because of the activism we're doing. So uh, it, it's very important what we're doing down there at the Orange County Courthouse. Now as far as the cop watching, um, we've been doing cop watching probably since, I don't know, September or so of last year, uh, very actively. And um, on uh, January 1st, New Year's Day, uh, about 2 a.m., I was arrested. I was videotaping a police officer who was uh, beating the crap out of somebody. Um, he, was pe he was already in handcuffs. He was pe pepper spraying him while he was in handcuffs. He had tased him several times, beating the crap out of him. And I was just standing there videotaping it. Um, the cop told me to go away several times. I refused. He came up, threw me on the ground, and arrested me. I asked him, what, you know, what am I being arrested for? He said, a uh, battery on a law enforcement officer. So I was charged with battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest without violence, and um, obstruction. Uh, they, uh, I spent seven days in jail. They, they tried to deny me bond multiple times for various reasons. Um, of finally, you know, finally I got out. Um, and I'm going to trial. I have trial set actually for Tuesday, the day I get back to Orlando. Uh, I face six years in prison. Um, it's not likely that I'll get six years in prison if I'm found guilty, but even if it's six weeks or six months, it still really sucks. But I, I refuse to take a plea. Um, you know, my lawyers indicated that I could probably get off on a misdemeanor, disorderly or something if I want to take a plea. But I'm not taking a plea because this, this piece of shit officer... This, <laughs> sorry, this piece. This scumbag officer came up and, um, you know, I was videotaping him. This is a man who has a history of tasing, a history of beating. He also has a history of arresting people who videotape him. He arrested a Channel 9 news reporter a couple of years ago for videotaping him. And, um, and this guy's a complete scumbag, and there's no way I'm going to bend over and, and take it. Um, you know, they're, they're going to have to go the hard road and send me to jail. And if it means I need... If it means I need to spend time in prison, that sucks. But um, you know, I'm not, I'm not bending over for these statist you know, sons of bitches. Appreciate, appreciate it, brother, man.